Hello everybody, this is Billy from CorkandJava.com and a lot of people say that a grinder for coffee is the best appliance that you could be putting your money into and I'm here to review today the Bodum Burr Grinder. It's a great entry-level burr grinder priced around $90. So I'm going to be teaching you all about it coming right up. Hello everybody, welcome to CorkandJava.com, your go-to place for coffee and wine reviews and how-tos. On this channel, we like to expand and enrich your experience with all of your favorite beverages. So if that sounds interesting to you and you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button below so you're notified when our future videos come out. All right, so today is all about the burr grinder and specifically entry-level burr grinders. There's a lot on the market and coming in at, I would say around the middle point of entry-level grinders is Bodum. It's competing with uh, the Encore from uh, Barazza, and which is about $130, I believe. And they're very similar grinders, and there's some that are a little bit cheaper than this too, but I think the value that you get out of this is a lot better quality than a lot of the ones that go cheaper than this. So I think this is the best bang for your buck. I've been personally using this grinder for about seven years now, so this isn't a review of my first reaction or experience. This has really been tested in our household and has really stood up the test of time. There's a few cons and a few pros that I really want to go over. Uh, so if you're looking to purchase this one, um, you'll be well informed. So the first feature on this is it goes continuous style all the way down from a pressurized portafilter espresso uh, capability. You're not going to be able to use this on any of the mid-tier to high-level espresso makers that don't use a pressurized portafilter. You're really going to have to spend a lot more money on a grinder that's above entry level to get uh, grinds fine enough to go with those higher end espresso machines. But if you have an entry level espresso machine with a pressurized portafilter, this is going to work just fine for you for that. And it continuously goes all the way up to um, a pour over, which is what I typically use this machine for. And you can really fine tune, dial in the settings that you want. You don't have to go certain clicks that a lot of other machines do or pick a different setting. You can really fine tune because it's on just a continuous dial. And it goes all the way up to French press. And we use that a lot for not only French press, but it makes pretty good cold brews too. I do want to note that one of the cons, and this is true with all the entry level grinders, is there's going to be, um, especially on the higher end, there's going to be some inconsistency. There's You're going to get a lot of uh, dust particles that are mixed in with your ground. Uh, but overall, for the price, I don't think you can get better consistency than the bottom here. Uh, one thing to note, if you have this one already, you probably know that it grinds a little bit fine for the setting. So for a Chemex or a pour over, there's a setting here. I'm usually one, one dot uh, to two dots, depending on how darkly roasted and the bean that I'm using. Uh, you kind of have to dial in each time you're um, using a different coffee because they all require slightly different adjustments to make that perfect pour over cup. Another thing to note on these lower end machines, they typically don't have very much gear reduction in the motor. So it's gonna be fairly fast of a grind. So if you're in a household, that's usually fine. Uh, definitely if you're looking to purchase something for a small restaurant or something like that, this is not gonna be something that you wanna cycle a ton through at one time or it's gonna heat up the beans and it's gonna uh, mess with the flavor. I don't know what it will do to the machine because I haven't used it at a high capacity like that, but it's not recommended. It's recommended really for household use. And also with the quick motor and uh, um, no gear reduction, you're going to get some static buildup. But what's great about this one, most entry level machines come with a plastic container, which makes the static problem uh, pretty bad. It explodes a lot of the 
fine grounds everywhere, especially if you're grinding really fine. But this one comes with a glass receptacle there, which really helps minimize the effects of the um, static in, in the grind. Some other features here is there's a timer so you can really dose out how much coffee you want to grind. That's not really something I use. I just use the on and off button because I like to pre-weigh my coffee beans ahead of time. I don't really keep anything stored in the hopper. But if you're someone who does, it's got a fairly sealed lid. So it'll keep your uh, beans fairly airtight in there. It, it seals up fairly nicely in there. And it's got a pretty decent sized hopper. Um, I don't know, depending on how much you brew, it could last you a few days to a week. So with this grinder, you're really gonna wanna keep up with maintenance on it. I've uh, let this one go a, a few weeks just to show you how much uh, grind really build up on the inside of the burrs here. And uh, as you can see, that can really mess with uh, you tuning this down, especially to lower um, grind sizes. If there's too much coffee built up inside the turning mechanism, it's not gonna allow you to get your dial all the way down to the low settings. You really wanna use a toothbrush or something and make sure you clean out the burrs and the, the plastic in there at least once every few weeks. But I've gone a while with this one and it can really take some abuse. If you're uh, mainly every day doing a pour over or something like that, you're not really messing with the finer settings, then you can go a while without really having to do much maintenance on it. Um, if you're doing espresso, you can go probably even longer. But uh, just if you're gonna keep this maintained and running as long as possible, I mean, I've been using this for seven years, you're gonna wanna keep up with just making sure that you're cleaning it out. You can even run, what I do sometimes, is uncooked uh, white rice, and that really kind of cleans all the burrs out as well. All right, and with this type of low-end, high-speed motor, it's gonna be fairly loud, but I mean, anytime you're grinding coffee with an electronic machine, it's gonna be decently loud anyway. I don't know any machine on the market that is really gonna be super quiet. But just to get you a feel for how loud it sounds, just a few beans in there. We're going on a medium setting. Just to give you a feel for how loud it is. All right, so not too bad. There's definitely ones that are louder. There's some that are quieter, but overall this is about average, especially for the price point when you got a motor running that fast. But on the flip side, you're running through your grounds pretty quick, so it's not loud for too long. So you probably cannot get a very good uh, view of what it looks like on camera. That's why I'm not doing a comparison of the grind size on paper. It's really hard to see that in any video. I've tried to find other people's videos and it doesn't really give you a good comparison of the different grind sizes. Um, so really you just gotta take my word and the word of other people online that this is fairly consistent especially for the price so yeah if you're looking to step up your game from either pre-ground coffee that you're buying at the store or if you got a blade grinder blade grinders are awful in my opinion you're getting you're getting such an inconsistent grind uh, it is not worth even grinding your own coffee in my opinion with a blade grinder Definitely, if you're into coffee or really looking to get into it, a burr grinder is definitely the best investment I think you can make in your coffee purchasing decisions. And I think a great entry one if you're just getting into the coffee game is this Bodum one here. Leave a comment down below with what your go-to grinder is. Is it something entry level like this? Or do you use something a little bit more fancy? What are your favorite features of uh, the grinder that you're using? Or if you're in the market for a grinder, what do you think of the Bodum one? Is it on your list? All right, everybody, make sure you check us out on Facebook and Twitter. And also, we got a Pinterest account where we're putting a bunch of awesome pins on there. It's Cork and Java. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys online. And until next time, bottoms up.